this is one of my favorite and one of most DJ's favorite performance features. It's the hot cue mode. In this lesson, we're going to run through how to set up hot cues, some of the settings surrounding hot cues, and then move on to how to actually use them in the mix. So first of all, no matter what record box controller you own, you will be able to set up hot cues, and that's with this pad mode here, labeled hot cue. Now, with no pads lit up, it means there are no hot cues set. Now, hot cues are basically, you want to think of it as a point to jump to and play from in the mix. So the track could be playing and you could jump to another part of the song just by hitting a pad. And the hot cues are saved to the actual file. They aren't, they don't, you don't have to set them each time you load a track in. Once they are set on that track, it will remember those hot cues the next time you load the song in. You can also save loops in hot cues and I'll show you how to do both of these things now. So first of all, to set a hot cue, we can simply press an empty pad. When the track's playing, I can hit that pad and you'll notice it keeps jumping back to that pad. Now one setting, first of all, to be aware of is that if I hit the pad really fast, you'll notice it responds to my touch. Now if yours doesn't do that, it might be because Quantize is turned on. So there are a few settings here, the Q button or up here on your controller, Quantize. You may not have an actual button for it, so that's why I'm highlighting it on the screen here. You have an independent Quantize for each deck. And when Quantize is active and some settings, let's just have a look in the record box settings. If we go to controller and others, there may be some settings here that are different on yours. So if I just enable that, when I hit the hot cue now, no matter how fast I press it, it locks to the grid, it locks to every single beat. Now you'll notice that in the settings here under controller and other, I can change how the quantize reacts. So if you're not aware, quantize basically locks everything you do to the grid of the music. And I can choose here what quantize responds to. So you could decide to just disable it. Even when quantize is turned on, the hot cues respond as fast as you like to use them. Or you could put quantize on and change the beat value. So it will lock it to every quarter beat no matter how fast I press it. This does come down to personal preference. I'm going to leave this as standard, so hot cue, enable, and on one beat. The same with the loops and everything else. Now, this means that when quantize is on, it will try and lock it to that beat. Just going back into the settings one more time, a really useful feature is this mode, jump before reaching the next beat. If I activate that, that means if I want to jump to basically the start of this track again, if I hit the hot cue just slightly, before or after, it will still keep it in time. Now, hot cues can be set at various points throughout the song, and we're going to run through some key moments to set up hot cues. But once you've set a hot cue, if you're not happy with it, you can hold shift, press the hot cue again, and it will delete it. And it's a quick way to delete your hot cues. Lastly, if I set up a few hot cues really quickly on this track, I'm just going to set them at a few different points. You can see we've got three hot cues set now. They show up on the screen here. You can delete them with the screen as well as on your controller. You can also right click and change the colors here. So you could decide to color code your hot cues in certain ways. So you could say that all the drops are one color. You could say that all the intros are another color. And that's up to you. If you have an RGB controller like this with the RGB pads, then you can change the hot cue, the general hot cue color as well. If we go into the settings, go to view and then scroll down. You'll notice that we have a hot cue color mode here, and we've got it on colorful at the moment. But we have also cold one, which will change them all to these blue and purple tones. We have cold two, which is another variation of blue tones, and we have colorful. I like to keep it on colorful. By the way, CDJ mode will just show them all as green. Keep them on colorful though, and then if you decide to color code them, it's a bit more obvious as to what the colors are to differentiate between the different sections of the song. One last setting to be aware of is the current mode that the hot cues are set up in. If the track is paused and I press a hot cue, it will jump to that point and activate the song. It plays from that position and now every time I press it, it just keeps jumping back to that point. However, we can change the way that that reacts. If I just cue the track back up, 
go into the settings and now under the controller tab under deck i can scroll down and you'll notice that there is this hot cue during pause gate playback is applied now if i tick that if the track's paused you'll notice it doesn't jump and play i have to hold the pad down for it to activate the hot cue and play from that point but when i release it just jumps back to that position If I want the track to continue playing, I would now have to press the play button to release my finger. I'm just making you aware of these different settings in case your hot cues are responding differently or you were interested in how some of the settings affect the hot cues as well. I prefer to have this turned off during pause gate playback is applied because there might be points where I want to quickly get into the mix and I just want to jump to the point in the song and play from that position like that. But there are techniques that you can use with gate playback applied where you might want to finger drum and you want that gate applied. Go and have a play around, just get familiar with setting up hot cues and deleting hot cues and some of those different settings. The last thing I mentioned just at the start of this lesson is we can save a loop into the hot cue pad bank. So if I've got a track playing, we'll cover loops in a later lesson, but if I just quickly activate a loop and then press an empty hot cue pad, you'll see that it is orange and that means the loop is active. You can also see on the screen in that pad, you get the little loop icon. Now, if I exit the loop, I can jump to that point at any, any position in the track just by hitting the pad. It will jump to that position and activate the loop at the same time. So that can be really useful. And we delete them just in the same way. Go and experiment and just get familiar with that first performance pad mode before moving on where we're going to look at actually where to set up hot cues and how to use them in the mix.